Mark, chapter 4, verses 21 to 25. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel, or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he saith unto them, Take heed what you hear, with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given, and he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. These verses seem intended to enforce the parable of the sower on the attention of those who heard it. They are remarkable for the succession of short, pithy, proverbial sayings which they contain. Such sayings are eminently calculated to arrest an ignorant hearer. They often strike, and stick in the memory, when the main subject of the sermon is forgotten. We learn from these verses that we ought not only to receive knowledge, but to impart it to others. A candle is not lighted in order to be hidden and concealed, but to be set on a candlestick and used. Religious light is not given to a man for himself alone, but for the benefit of others. We are to try to spread and diffuse our knowledge. We are to display to others the precious treasure that we have found, and persuade them to seek it for themselves. We are to tell them of the good news that we have heard, and endeavor to make them believe and value it themselves. We shall all have to give an account of our use of knowledge one day. The books of God in the day of judgment will show what we have done. If we have buried our talent in the earth, if we have been content with a lazy, idle, do-nothing Christianity, and cared nothing what happened to others so long as we went to heaven ourselves, there will be a fearful exposure at the last. There is nothing hid which shall not be manifested." It becomes all Christians to lay these things to heart. It is high time that the old tradition, that the clergy alone ought to teach and spread religious knowledge, should be exploded and cast aside for ever. To do good and diffuse light is the duty for which all members of Christ's church are responsible, whether ministers or laymen. Neighbors ought to tell neighbors, if they have found an unfailing remedy in time of plague. Christians ought to tell others that they have found medicine for their souls, if they see them ignorant and dying for want of it. What saith the Apostle Peter? As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10. They will be happy days for the church when that text is obeyed. We learn, in the second place from these verses, the importance of hearing and of considering well what we hear. This is a point to which our Lord evidently attaches great weight. We have seen it already brought out in the parable of the sower. We see it here enforced in two remarkable expressions. If any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. Take heed what ye hear. Hearing the truth is one principal avenue through which grace is conveyed to the soul of man. Faith cometh by hearing. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. One of the first steps toward conversion is to receive from the Spirit a hearing ear. Seldom are men brought to repentance and faith in Christ without hearing. The general rule is that of which St. Paul reminds the Ephesians. Ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Let us bear this in mind when we hear preaching decried as a means of grace. There are never wanting men who seek to cast it down from the high place which the Bible gives it. There are many who proclaim loudly that it is far more important to the soul to hear liturgical forms read and to receive the Lord's Supper than to hear God's word expounded. Of all such notions let us beware. Let it be a settled principle with us that, Hearing the word is one of the foremost means of grace that God has given to man. Let us give to every other means and ordinance its proper value and proportion. But never let us forget the words of Paul, Despise not prophesyings, and his dying charge to Timothy, Preach the word. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 20, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. Footnote. Public and continual preaching of God's word is the ordinary means and instrument of the salvation of mankind. St. Paul calleth it the ministry of reconciliation of man unto God. By preaching of God's word, the glory of God is enlarged, faith is nourished, and charity increased. By it the ignorant is instructed, the negligent exhorted and invited, the stubborn rebuked, the weak conscience comforted, and to all those that sin of malicious wickedness, the wrath of God is threatened. By preaching, due obedience to Christian princes and magistrates is planted in the hearts of subjects, for obedience precedeth of conscience, 
Conscience is grounded upon the word of God. The word of God worketh his effect by preaching. So as generally when preaching wanteth, obedience faileth. Archbishop Grindle's Letter to Queen Elizabeth. End of footnote. We learn in the last place from these verses the importance of a diligent use of religious privileges. What says our Lord? Unto you that hear shall more be given. He that hath, to him shall be given, and he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. This is a principle which we find continually brought forward in Scripture. All that believers have is undoubtedly of grace. Their repentance, faith, and holiness are all the gift of God. But the degree to which a believer attains in grace is ever set before us as closely connected with his own diligence in the use of means, and of his own faithfulness in living up to the light and knowledge which he possesses. Indolence and laziness are always discouraged in God's word. Labor and pains in hearing, reading, and prayer are always represented as bringing their own reward. The soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 4. An idle soul shall suffer hunger. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 15. Attention to this great principle is the main secret of spiritual prosperity. The man who makes rapid progress in spiritual attainments, who grows visibly in grace, and knowledge, and strength, and usefulness, will always be found to be a diligent man. He leaves no stone unturned to promote his soul's well-doing. He is diligent over his Bible, diligent in his private devotions, diligent as a hearer of sermons, diligent in his attendance at the Lord's table. And he reaps according as he sows. Just as the muscles of the body are strengthened by regular exercise, so are the graces of the soul increased by diligence in using them. Do we wish to grow in grace? Do we desire to have stronger faith, brighter hope, and clearer knowledge? Beyond doubt we do, if we are true Christians. Then let us live fully up to our light, and improve every opportunity. Let us never forget our Lord's words in this passage. With what measure we meet to our souls, it shall be measured to us again. The more we do for our souls, the more shall we find God does for them.